All right, we've already talked a lot about all different types of limits, and we've talked about evaluating a limit as we approach a certain or a specific number. We've done it graphically, where we can look at a picture, follow the path, and see if we come together. We've done it numerically, where we punch in a t bunch of numbers in our table of values and see if we um, approach the same y value. And we've also done it algebraically. Remember, when we do it algebraically, the very first thing that we're always going to try is direct substitution. If we plug in our value and we get a value back, well then that um, y value is our answer. If we plug in our x value and we get 0 over 0, remember there's a hole in our graph and we have to somehow get rid of that hole. Remember we've factored and we've rationalized as our two ways of simplifying to get rid of our hole and then we can try our direct substitution again. If we do our direct substitution at the beginning though, and we get a number over 0, any number over 0 means we actually have a vertical asymptote in our graph. And remember, as soon as we know that there's a vertical asymptote, there's only three options. We can either both go up, we can both go down, or one goes up and one goes down, and the limit truly doesn't exist. So we could say positive infinity, negative infinity, or truly doesn't exist. So we've done a bunch of things already. We've got one more thing to talk about when we talk about limits. What we're going to talk about now is what happens when we evaluate a limit as we approach positive infinity. So we're not actually specifically approaching a number, like approaching 2 or 3 or negative 7. What if we approach positive infinity? Really, what I'm asking you to do on that problem is figure out what's happening as we go really, 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 really far out to the right. Or I might ask you to figure out what the limit is as we approach negative infinity. So what's happened if we go really, really, really far out to the left of our graph? Well, there's a couple different ways you can do these types of problems. One of the first ways is looking at horizontal asymptotes. We know that if there's a horizontal asymptote in our graphs, then our graphs kind of get really close to that line, but never actually touch. And as I go really far out to either positive infinity or negative infinity, my graph kind of gets stuck at that horizontal asymptote. It might go up and get stuck, it might come down and get stuck, but it ends up getting kind of stuck at that horizontal asymptote. If I can figure out where that horizontal asymptote is, well then my limit is going to approach that horizontal asymptote. It's going to get stuck there, right? And so if I can figure out what my horizontal asymptote is, then I know what my limit is, whether I go out to positive infinity or whether I go out to negative infinity. Because on any polynomial, it's going to be the same one either way. Or any rational function, I should say, it's going to be the same one either way. So let's review how to quickly find horizontal asymptotes. To find a horizontal asymptote, I'm going to look at the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator. I call them p's and q's. If the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of your denominator, if p is greater than q, if the degree of your top is bigger, then my top, my numerator, is going to grow faster than my denominator, and there is no horizontal asymptote. That means my limit doesn't exist. Well, we're not going to stop there. Does it really not exist, or does it just go up to positive infinity or down to negative infinity? It doesn't get stuck, but it might keep shooting up or shoot down. If p is greater than q, then there is no horizontal asymptote, and so it doesn't get stuck. My answer is either up or down, positive infinity or negative infinity. Now, if p is less than q, that means the degree of my bottom is bigger than the degree of my top, my bottom's going to grow bigger faster. And if you think about a fraction, if my bottom is bigger than my top, and that bottom gets bigger and bigger and bigger on my fraction, my fraction actually gets smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually I approach zero. So if the degree of the bottom is bigger than the degree of the top, if p is less than q, then I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. If I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, well then whether I go out to positive infinity or whether I go out to negative infinity, I'm going to get stuck right there at zero. So my limit will equal zero. Now if the degree of my top is equal to the degree of my bottom, then they're kind of going to grow at the same rate, right? And so the only thing that's going to affect their difference between the degree of uh, the top versus the bottom is the coefficient. And so if the degree of the top is equal to the degree of the bottom, then there's going to be a horizontal asymptote at the coefficients divided. Remember, those are the numbers in front of the highest um, degree term. So my limit would be whatever the coefficient is of the top divided by whatever the coefficient is of the bottom. All right, if you can remember those three rules, then these questions are going to go really easy and really quickly for you. That's one way of doing it. 
I'll show you another way to do it in the next video. But if you're gonna do this way, I need to make sure that I can see your work. I need to be able to see that you're comparing the degree of the top versus the degree of your bottom, your P's and your Q's. All right, let me show you, and then we'll go back and do the second way. So in example number nine, I'm asking you to evaluate each limit, and I'm asking you to evaluate it as X approaches infinity or even negative infinity. So we can't really do our direct substitution like we've been used to. And so that's our sign, that's our clue that we have to look for horizontal asymptotes. As we're going really far out to the right, what happens with my graph? Does it get stuck? And if it does get stuck, where does it get stuck at? And that would be my limit. If there's a horizontal asymptote that it gets stuck at, then that's gonna be my limit. Here we go. The first one, the limit as X approaches infinity of eight X plus six over three X minus one. I know that I can find a horizontal asymptote if I can compare the degree of the top versus the degree of the bottom, the P's and the Q's. I notice that the highest exponent of my top is one and my highest exponent of my bottom is one. So P is actually equal to Q. That's my work. If I know that P is equal to Q, then I know that there's a horizontal asymptote at their coefficients divided. In this case, it would be eight divided by three. Since there's a horizontal asymptote at 8 thirds, when I go really far out to the right, then my graph is gonna get stuck at 8 thirds, and that's what my limit's going to be, 8 thirds. Even if I change this question to negative infinity, as I go way out to the left of this graph, if I were approaching negative infinity, if there's a horizontal asymptote at 8 thirds, then even if I go really far out to the left, I'm gonna get stuck at that horizontal asymptote, or at 8 thirds. So whether I'm going to positive infinity or negative infinity, my limit is still the same, 8 thirds. Look at B. B says we're approaching positive infinity for this rational function. I know then, as soon as I'm looking at positive or negative infinity, then I can compare the degree of my top versus the degree of my bottom. It looks like the degree of my numerator is 1 and the degree of my denominator is 3. That means the degree of my denominator is bigger. It's gonna get bigger faster than my top is. That means P is less than Q. If the bottom grows bigger than the top on a fraction, that really means that my fraction is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually I approach zero. I know that there's a horizontal asymptote at zero. So whether I go out to positive infinity or negative infinity really, if there's a horizontal asymptote at zero, I know my graph's gonna get stuck there and my limit is going to be zero. All right, two more. On C, I'm doing the limit as X approaches positive infinity. So I know I can look for a horizontal asymptote really far out to the right. It looks like the degree of my top is two. The degree of my bottom is one. That means my top is gonna to get bigger than my bottom, faster than my bottom. P is greater than Q. If P is greater than Q, then I know there is no horizontal asymptote. It's not going to get stuck. So as I approach positive infinity, my graph isn't going to get stuck. That means I have two options. It's either going to go up or it's going to go down. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to graph this in my calculator. I'm going to put the function into my y equals, making sure I put parentheses on the top and parentheses on the bottom, and I'm going to look at my graph. And I'm going to see really far to the right, what happens? And it kind of looks something like this. Okay, it's an ugly sketch, don't <laughs> but it looks something like this. So I know as I'm approaching positive infinity, my graph's gonna slowly, slowly, slowly go up, 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 up to positive infinity. Now, my answer might change if I asked you to go to negative infinity. You'll have to look at your graph to figure out what's happening as you approach negative infinity. It could go up or down depending on what the graph looks like. But in this case, as I'm approaching positive infinity, I know my graph's gonna keep going up. It's gonna grow, 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 grow on the Y. And so I can say that my limit approaches positive infinity. All right, D, we're approaching positive infinity on this graph. And so I'm gonna see what's happening really far to the right. As soon as I see this, I know I can look for horizontal asymptotes because if there's a horizontal asymptote and I get stuck, well then that's what my limit's going to be. Let's look at P's and Q's. Now be careful on this one. It looks like the degree of my top is three and the degree of my bottom is two. Remember, degree is your highest exponent. So they tried to trick you on this one and they put it out of order. So be careful with that. 
If the degree is three on the top and two on the bottom, then that means my degree of my top is bigger than my bottom. P is greater than Q. My top's gonna get bigger than my bottom faster. That means I have no horizontal asymptote. If there is no horizontal asymptote, then it doesn't get stuck. So as I go really far to the right, it doesn't get stuck. That means I only have two options. It's gonna go up or it's gonna go down. So let's graph this in our calculator and see what happens. So my really ugly rough sketch looks something like this. And if I ask you what's happening as we approach positive infinity, if I follow this path, it looks like this graph is gonna go down, 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 down to negative infinity. Now, if I change the question and I asked you for the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the same graph, it still doesn't have a horizontal asymptote, so it doesn't get stuck. But this time, as I approach negative infinity, what's my graph gonna do? Well, it's gonna keep growing up, 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 and I would say that my answer is actually positive infinity for that piece. So if I don't have a horizontal asymptote, my limit could be different depending on where I'm going. If you're approaching positive infinity or negative infinity, are you going to the left or are you going to the right? And your graph might be different depending on which um, direction you're headed. If you're going to the left and your graph goes up, then you're going to positive infinity. If you're going to the right, positive infinity, but your graph goes down, then your answer is negative infinity. So you've gotta be careful on what direction you're going to determine what your limit is going to be. So that's one way of doing limits as we approach positive or negative infinity is by looking at those horizontal asymptotes. Now you should not be looking at horizontal asymptotes any other time. If I ask you to evaluate the limit as X approaches five, then you shouldn't be looking at a horizontal asymptotes. You should be looking at what's happening at five. We only look for horizontal asymptotes when we're concerned about what's happening really far out to the left or the right, positive or negative infinity. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to do the same exact example